So this is a wee um, infill video between um, part two and part one. Um, it is thermostat switches. Uh, what do we do about them? Uh, every single Audi TT I know I've ever seen, the Mark 1s, the wee thermostat switches on the heater break and then um, they're just constantly falling to bits. And if you order OEM ones or you get the second hand ones off eBay um, that have been taken off a car, uh, you're guaranteed they're going to break again. I don't know what the material is but it's super brittle. So, what's the answer? It's I reckon 3D scanning and 3D printing. We're going to have a wee shot at that um, and see how it turns out. So these switches, um, I mean they're quite complex actually, so they're... I've had to glue this one back together, this came off mine um, and it was just broken. But you can see the wee indentations um, and the wee kind of legs or lugs that connect around the, the thermostat switch. The other one was actually broken and um, it was in the glove box when I found it. And it's got the wee light switch inside it as well. So um, I think the answer, I, I thought the easiest way to do this was to buy a, a second hand kind of thermostat unit off eBay. This only cost five quid and um, probably doesn't work but it's going to give us the the profiles to work to and to scan um, so we can get a really good um, cut a kind of reverse engineered switch to fit on this unit. There are um, there are STL files available. Um, I saw one on Thingiverse that actually printed it and it was shocking. Um, it didn't even come close to fitting on the on the actual um, a unit, it just, I mean you'd have to glue it on basically, I'm, I'm, I'm not wanting that, I'm kind of wanting, I want it to be as close, close a fit as possible. So first stage is 3D scanning. Right, so that's the original scan. What is that? That's the original, that's the original scan. scan. Yeah. <coughs> so the idea of the scan data is just to get a profile to work to. Yep. So you can do an exact, well, not exact, but as close as you can get to reverse engineering in the CAD. Yep. Gives you an indication of location and such. You don't get a great scan from yeah. this because the, the beam scatter is so large around these areas that it kind of fills them in. I mean, you can spend a lot of time. Yeah, doing which, all the detail and things. Which is this what we scanned, which we'll cut to. Um, but that's the mesh, effectively. And then I think Sanders <laughs> can show us the, what do you call it, the actual start to CAD it up, the actual SCAD data. SCAD, CAD data, even. <laughs> well, look at that SCAD data. Right, so this is, this is actual. CAD model now. So this is the CAD model, yep. Yeah. Um, 
It's a bit messy just now, but... And the reason that it's good for scanning it, it gives you the exact profile and the curve, which I think is the problem with half the people that attempt this. You can't get that that exact curve where it sits on the switch. I mean, look at that, it's bloody incredible. I'm not sure. But underneath, I mean, if you've got the original part, you can take measurements from it, which um, is, is a lot easier. Which is why you bought that off eBay for a fiver. But I went, five quid. I mean, then you can effectively fix every bit on it if it is broken. Yeah. This is the switch, the light. So just just put the actual um, put put the two switches on. Yeah, seven and eight for with this. So two switches. I assume you switch this car off, isn't it? So effectively, that <coughs> the other one is just a. It's just a, a replica of the other one, but it's got the wee light switch cut out of the square. Yep. They're exactly the same, so it's the same curve, the same profile. So switch one and switch two are the same. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Yep. So, next stage is 3D printing. <laughs> After you take the scan data and you've done the CAD work, it's then time to set up on the software which is Sprint for a figure 4. Um, let's just take a wee look at these. Start score. Uh, modify. So you can see the two different styles, switch 1 and switch 2. And that one's going to be um, cut out for the light. These <coughs> are just identical switches, <coughs> only difference being that we square cut out for the light. And um, there's the indentations for the, the light and the these light up anyway in the switches. So it's just like he's a set up now and uh, going to print and see if the card work is any good. Now I'm lucky enough to work for the company I work for called CE Models, part of Pro Total. Um, this is my department, this is SLA, which is steady lithography, which is UV curing lasers, um, and these are all various machines. We've got Pro X800s, iPro 8000s, Projects, Vipers, and we run various materials in these. From HPC, which is a high performance composite, a lot of Formula 1 teams use, right through to something like this, which is Clearview. Um, this was just happened to run on the day, it was a wee test piece, so I thought it'd be, it'd be cool just to let you see how the laser works. Basically it's curing the top level of the resin um, and this process, this one's quick cast so this would be done for making investment casting patterns. So you can see here, that would be the build finish now. Um, it comes up out the vat once it's um, finished and it's got a kind of honeycomb mesh inside with like a, I think it's like a 0.5 or a 0.4 wall thickness. Um, and again this, this is like a pattern that would be used for investment casting, say they were making titanium parts or something like that. The technology we'll be using is DLP. And the switches we're going to use another technology called DLP, which is these, and this is figure four. These are called, basically it uses a projector which flashes an image up on a membrane on the bottom end of this, this, this material is called Pro Black, so it's black, you can't see the membrane. Um, and it'll eventually, that um, platform will lower down into the resin and then it'll eventually come up with a part built. Um, it's a pretty cool technology actually, it's very quick and incredibly accurate. The big question is, do they fit? 
Um, this is the 3D printed ones. So after we've done the scanning and done the printing, um, we managed to, well Sanders very kindly carried this up for me. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. You can see he's got all the wee lugs on there and indentations in the wee runners that the arrows fit with um, the tabs. So these wee tabs go over the go over the wee ledges you can see there. Um, so yeah, let's have a wee look and see how good a fit they are. Um, so we'll take the first one, which is this. Is that way round? Oh, and this is this one round. Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, you kind of get better than that. I mean, just look at the shadow gaps in it. Um, yeah, that that's uh, pretty good. In fact, they are they're probably better than OEM and the. The plastic, the print material we use is, is called Pro Black, so it's a very tough and very durable. And yeah, so these can actually be painted as well, but I probably will just leave them that black colour actually. And um, turned it really well. Yeah, so I would say that that is a success. Um, that, I mean, that it just goes to show you 3D scanning, reverse engineering, CAD and up. It's, it's the way it's the way to do it. It's, it's absolutely perfect. I mean, you're incredible. So I would say that's a success. Anyway, so next video will be part two of the TT uh, with the cells, the wings, pipes, uh, and I've got a few other things planned for it. But uh, yeah, so catch you in the next one.